Hi, and welcome to this section of the Chemistry Tutor. And in this section, we're going to talk about the topic of ions and ionic charge. So you might wonder why, since we've been talking about uh, molecules in the last section and naming molecular compounds, why are we now switching gears to talking about something that sounds different, which is ions? That's because, uh, remember back when we talked about the two broad classes of of uh, chemical items we'll basically discuss in this class as far as chemical reactions. We had the molecular compounds, uh, which is sort of one branch, which is uh, basically a two non-metals whenever they're, they're combined. And then we have the other branch, which is called the ionic compounds, when we have a metal uh, from the left-hand side of the periodic table plus a non-metal from the right-hand side of the periodic table. And we talked about the characteristics of both of those, and we'll get into that later. Well, before we can really discuss ionic compounds and how they form, it's really important to understand what an ion is, right? Because how are you going to understand what an ionic compound is if you don't even know what an ion is? So what we're going to do in this section is basically review what an ion is, and also I'm going to tie that back to the periodic table, because it turns out for a whole lot of elements. You can figure out what the ion is going to look like just by looking at the periodic table and the way that it's set up. And that's going to help you over and over and over and over again in chemistry when you start forming these ionic compounds. So the first thing to remember, forget about ions for just a second. It's a fancy sounding name. It's a very easy concept. Remember back to the atom. We said that we had protons and neutrons in the nucleus. Right? The atomic number of the element is, is, is equal to the number of protons that we have in the nucleus. And surrounding that guy, we have electrons that are orbiting around an electron cloud, and they're kind of orbiting like this. But we always said that every atom is electrically neutral on the whole. Even though it has positive protons in the nucleus, and it has negative electrons surrounding the nucleus, because we have equal number of positive uh, protons in the center and negative electrons going around, if there's equal number of positive and negative, then if you zoom out on the atom, you don't really notice that there's positive and negative. You just, those kind of things kind of cancel out, and you basically have a neutral atom. And that's everything. That's my shirt. That's this, you know, this plastic pen. That's the board. They all consist more or less of neutral atoms. So let's review that here, and then we'll talk about how we go from having a neutral atom to having what we call an ion. So if the word ion bothers you or scares you or worries you because it sounds foreign and different, don't worry about it because it's, it's very, very simple. So let's take as an example uh, lithium, right? So you can look on the periodic table and uh, find the, the symbol Li, so let's look at Li for lithium. And I'm just picking that just because it's a fairly simple atom. There's nothing special about lithium uh, in particular. Um, lithium's atomic number is three, right? So let me write that down. So the atomic number is equal to three. So you can find that on the periodic table. I encourage you to do that, actually, if you haven't already uh, done that. So what that means, because its atomic number is three, is that it has three protons in the nucleus. So I'm going to write them like this. So these are plus charges. Uh, so this is like a proton here, and this is a proton here, and this is a proton here. Now there are, all, there are also neutrons in this nucleus here. Uh, I'm not going to draw them here, only because I'm trying to keep the drawing simple. But just remember, there are neutrons in the nucleus there. The number of neutrons is going to determine what isotope you're really talking about. We talked about isotopes before. Um, but remember, neutrons don't have any charge, so they're not really going to participate in any of these charge discussions. So just remember, I'm drawing a simple nucleus here with the three protons reflecting the atomic number, but there are some electrically neutral neutrons in there as well. 